Gypsy Rose Blanchard, how do you plead? I'm Tiffany Taylor for The Hollywood Reporter News, and I'm sitting down with Caleb Worthy. He plays Nick Godijohn in Who Lose the Act. So for anyone who hasn't seen this show, just briefly describe your character's role in this story. Well, it's a very complex story because it's about these um, three people who all make very big mistakes um, along the road. It's about this girl who uh, her mother has been chosen by proxy, and she's basically been captive for most of her life. Uh, and then she meets myself, or the character I play on, online, and uh, they end up murdering Dee Dee Blanchard, her mom. What are you giggling about? I met my Prince Charming. <laughs> and even though your character, Nick, is a killer, and so you kind of know that throughout the story, and he has these sort of creepy moments, you also feel sorry for him a lot and really empathetic toward his character. So how did you balance those two sides of him? Well, the key was empathy and having a lot of compassion for the character. I, I, in my opinion, as an actor, it doesn't matter what kind of character you play, you have to approach that character with empathy no matter what they've done, even if they've done horrific things. So that was my approach to this character. In, in the, uh, the process of, of investigating him, every headline I saw just referred to him as a murderer, and they didn't really talk about the rest of his life. And I kept thinking to myself, well, there's a lot of life he lived before that moment, and a lot of life he lived after. So my uh, investigation was about the rest of the, the other parts of his life. I'm so trapped. And I can't tell anyone. You can tell me. And you did a lot of research before playing the role, right? Yeah. Talk yeah. to me about that a little bit. Yeah, it was a very uh, intense research process. Um, I, I spent about two months leading up to the filming of the first episode, just kind of getting a, a sense of who this guy was. I um, I spent a lot of time at a, a center for, for adults with autism, because he's on the spectrum. And I really felt a massive responsibility to get that right. Um, to be respectful to the autistic community. Uh, so I, I read five books about that, I worked with specialists one-on-one, -on -one, and, um, and then there was, there was the academic side in terms of learning about him and all of his traits, but then it was also the emotional side as well. So I, I knew he had a lot of very dark thoughts um, throughout his life, so I played disturbing videos at night uh, before I went to, to set, and um, I'd wake up and they'd still be playing. So I'd kind of be haunted by those images. And then after we filmed the, the, the murder scene, because we filmed it in chronological order, I would have the, uh, the picture of, of, uh, of Dee Dee Blanchard's crime photos on my phone. And so it would be the last thing I'd see before I go to bed at night and the first thing I'd see when I woke up. And I'd constantly be haunted by those, those images. How did going to those dark places and being in that dark space for so long affect you personally? Um, I felt like I was pulling away from a lot of family and friends. I didn't reach out as much. I was off social media for about five months while we filmed it because I just didn't feel like it, it didn't feel right to be on social media playing such an intense character. But what was nice was, was Joey and Patricia. They kept, they kept things light, which was nice. Is there one scene that was particularly hard to film? Yes, there was a scene where um, we, we finally get caught by the SWAT team and we're in a closet. Yeah. And uh, Joey and I decided to just film it uh, without actually leaving the closet. So in between setups and takes, we wouldn't leave. So it was a couple hours of us just filming and holding each other and crying. And uh, it, we wanted it to feel as real as possible, obviously. But that was particularly important because it was our last moment of freedom. And it was, it was really setting up the rest of their life and the, and the way that they handled themselves throughout the court proceedings um, and the confession as well. And for, for Nick, I knew, because we had a good idea that he would likely get a life sentence, I wanted to make sure that I, I really tackled that moment appropriately because it was his last moment as a free man. Now there's been a lot of Emmy buzz surrounding this show. With you in the cast, when you guys start hearing that, oh, we might get nominated, what conversations do you guys have about that? You freak out. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's insane. When you're, when you're filming something, you never expect, um, you're hoping people just enjoy it and that someone watches it because you're in such a bubble. Um, so then when you find out that people are actually enjoying it quite a bit, it, it, it means a lot and you, uh, I think you do exactly what you think you do. You you text the cast and say, "Oh my God, people are actually liking the show a lot." It's uh, it's very sweet and unexpected, um, and you freak out just as much as you think you would. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, well, and we you. can't wait to see you know what happens with the act and the Emmys when the nominations come out. Yeah, that's it's. I cannot believe I'm even being asked that question. That's really cool.